We are the Muslim Ummah And each day that goes by The harder we try In gratitude we pray to Allah Chosen as part of the best of mankind We spread the word of Islam Every difficulty faced in our lives Makes us realize that it's just part of Allah's plan Feeling stronger we take it in our stride Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back to this amazing journey that we started 20 episodes ago. Yes indeed we have reached episode number 20. I'm Dr. Steph Karis, the editor-in-chief of ilmonlinemac.com, a lecturer in several universities in Europe and in Africa and the author of The Forgotten Ottoman Heritage in Europe. Now we have come to episode 20 and we have gone back now to a country which we discussed already before. We mentioned this country before, uh, but we took it from a different perspective. We looked at it from a different angle. And this time, we're going to look into the more modern aspect of Islam, the spread of Islam in Australia, from a different perspective, the, spe the, 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 the spread of Islam by the immigrants, especially Muslim immigrants, but also the conversion rates in, in Australia. Australia <clears throat> is a massive country, as we have figured out already. We have seen that Australia has had contacts to the Muslims in Indonesia already around 200 years before even Captain Cook, before the British arrived in Australia. Before it became a British colony, Australia had contacts, and the Aborigines, the Australian, native Australian people living in Australia, had contacts to the Muslims in Indonesia. And not only were there some contacts be individual, on individual basis, no, trade relationships were quite, quite broad. Indonesian uh, Muslim trade, traders and merchants had come down to North Australia and had already established communities and were living there. Many of them had married Aborigine women had already created Muslim communities long before the arrival of the British. We have to look at it. But now we're talking about Australia, the modern times of Australia from the 19th to 20th century, actually from the 20th century on when the migration waves started from all over the world, especially Europe. And we can see that, as we mentioned before, Australia had a white-only policy. A white-only policy in such a way that any other color, even if it was a little bit darker, was not accepted, was not easily uh, accepted into Australian society, especially not Asians or Africans. They would just look into Europe as the continent that would give them workers and that would give them people to come and settle in Australia. So that the biggest immigrant groups until the beginning of the 1950s and 60s and even 70s were actually Europeans from areas such as the Balkan Peninsula, such as the south of Europe, Italy, Greece, Spain and Portugal, but also the Balkan Peninsula, like Albania, Bosnia, um, Eastern Europe in general, but also Central Europe. Now, we can find within them quite a big Muslim community, and I'm very, very sure the Australians did not expect that. They thought, let's not accept the Asians and the Africans, we keep Islam out anyway. The Europeans, let's get the Europeans, who are mainly non-Muslims. But they didn't, of course, encounter that, together with the Europeans who came from the Balkan Peninsula, many Albanians, many Bosnians, many other types of Muslims came into the country, many Turks, and this all, of course, created Muslim communities. Islam in Australia, in contrast to the rest of the world, like North America, South America, Europe, in the Western world, is a bit different in a way of numbers and power, position. Let's put it rather position than power. The position of Islam in Australia is just number four. So it's not the second largest religion like it is in most other countries, but it is the fourth one. 
there is Buddhism even that is much bigger than Islam. The Muslims are more or less uh, make a percentage of 1.7% of the total Australian population. 1.7%. Whereas the Buddhists are 2.1%. Then we have, of course, a different type of Christians, different types, different denominations of Christians. We have Catholics, we have Protestants, and we have Orthodox. We should not forget Melbourne is the second biggest Greek city outside of Greece after Athens. So there is Athens and then there is Melbourne. Mashallah, and this makes it very interesting for me personally, of course, myself. Uh, but yes, Orthodox, uh, Catholics, and Protestants make a bigger percentage to the Muslim population, to the Muslim percentage. But of course, this is the general view of the Muslims in the whole of Australia. Certain parts of Australia, of course, such as the cities of Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, they have a much bigger population, a much bigger percentage according to the population than the entire country. Of course, we can find quite a big number. Also an important point here to mention with Australia, Australia Australia's com Muslim community, or rather Muslim communities, are as diverse as the American Muslim communities are. Not only in terms of origins, where they come from originally, but also racially, ethnically, culturally, and linguistically. So we have a very diverse bunch of Muslims living in Australia. In certain areas, more from a specific area than in others. For example, we can find Albanians in certain areas more than we can find Bosnians in other areas. We can find Turks rather than living in, in their areas, of course. And uh, this, this is what makes uh, Australia very different to Europe, for example. Among the migrants and among the Muslim migrants in Australia, we will also find a quite a big group of Australian Anglos or Anglo-Saxons, Anglo-Saxon Aust Australians who actually had accept have accepted Islam. Quite a percentage, which we don't have the exact number again of. We never had this. It's impossible to find out exactly how many Muslim Australian reverts there are. But, but there is quite a number which has accepted Islam also, not necessarily the Anglo-Saxons or of Irish origin Muslim, um, um, Australian citizens, but also there are Greeks, there are Italians, there are many other immigrant groups that among them will have individuals that have accepted Islam, mashallah, quite some of them. And again, this one we can find on the DVD that I mentioned before, Muslims in Australia, you will be able to find more about this. Although we know that Islam's presence in Australia was earlier than just the migration period, um, Islam in Australia plays nowadays a different role than it used to play the time before the British came. Next to the community, the Muslim community or communities being so diverse and so different, because they do come nowadays from any part of the world, like in the US, they come from the Middle East, they come from the Balkan, they come from Europe, they come from Southeast Asia, from the Indian subcontinent, and even from Sub-Saharan Africa, such as a big Somali community, and this is the recent case, the last decade, the last two decades. So due to that fact, we will of course also find that the Islamic practices are different, like in the US, and we will also find quite some sectarian problems. As we mentioned before in South America, Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, etc. We will find in Australia also a lot of Arab immigrants, especially from the Sham area, uh, Lebanon and Syria, as it is in South America. And again, again, the interesting fact again, that most of them are actually Middle Eastern Christians. They are Christi Christian Arabs and not Muslims. So most Australians with origins in the Indian subcontinents, the Indian subcontinent, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, most of them are actually not Muslims, but Hindus or Sikhs or even Christians. The same with the Arabs. Most of the Arabs who immigrated into Australia, most of them, most of them are Christians again. And even most of the Africans are Christians. So they are not the main carriers of Islam. 
Of course, there is a percentage that brought Islam also from the Arab world, from the Balkan Peninsula, as we said, and so on. But the main carriers of Islam are actually the converts and then the recent, the previous, not the recent ones, the previous Muslim immigrants from Albania, Kosovo, Bosnia. These are the people who actually mainly brought Islam to the modern period, to Australia. Again, also, as we said before, quite a percentage of Australian reverse, mashallah, and this, of course, affects the way that Islam is spreading within Australia. Because it is different if it's now my own kind speaking to me, or if it's now a kind of African or an Arab or an Asian speaking to me about Islam. I would just simply say, as many people do, well, this is your religion, keep it, it's fine, I have mine. But if it's now somebody, if I'm Australian and I'm in Australia, white Australian, and I speak to another white Australian who's telling me how great Islam is, I might be looking deeper into it because obviously he's somebody who accepted Islam. So I might take it more easily from him than from an Arab or some, somebody else. While Australia, as we said, had this white only, white Australia policy, it is very, very, very important to realize that I'm sure that the Australian government did not realize that time that the Muslims who came from the Balkan or the European immigrants from the Balkan were actually Muslims. And this has affected, of course, the spread of Islam in Australia and in the region of Australia, even New Zealand. Jazakum al we will speak after this one after the break. We are the Muslim Ummah And each day that goes by The harder we try In gratitude we pray to Allah La bayk Allahumma la bayk La bayk Allahumma la bayk La bayk la sharika Salah is a beautiful recipe For happiness in this life and the next But if you don't have the right ingredients for it the meal won't be so delicious. You look for that taste, but you can't find the same taste. You can't find that same sweetness because you're missing certain ingredients. So much all these things, we don't realize the things that we do in our everyday life, the things that we do in our actions, it's having a big effect on our prayers. We're like, what is missing? Where are these, these missing ingredients? Where did they go? Why can't I find the pleasure of my prayer? Why can't I benefit from my prayer? The Muslim woman And each day that goes by The harder we try In gratitude we pray to Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back after the break. We have mentioned the white only policy or the white Australia policy that Australia was having actually until just some decades ago, not long time ago. And as I said, I'm very, very sure that most of the people in the Australian government did not realize that when they allowed European, white Europeans to come over such as Albanians, Bosnians, Turks, that they didn't realize that most of them were Muslims. In the 1920s and 1930s, Albanian Muslims were accepted whose European heritage made them more compatible with the white Australia policy. Albanian Muslims built the first mosque in Shepparton. This is in Victoria, in the state of Victoria in 1960, and the first mosque in Melbourne in 1963. Melbourne saw its first mosque built by Albanians. Now, nowadays, if you look at Albania nowadays, if you look at um, us Europeans, I mean, if I have to think of Albanians, if I had had to think before Albania opened, it would have been difficult for me to even point out where this country is, to find out where this country is and what exactly the background of these people are. But strangely enough, you know, we can find out that 70% of these people, of the Albanians, are actually Muslims, although many of them do not practice Islam anymore. They accepted Islam through the Ottoman Empire, which was mentioned in the previous um, episodes. And um, the, Ottoman, the Ottoman sultans brought Islam over there, and many of the pashas uh, serving the Ottoman Empire were actually Albanians. The Albanians played an important role during the time of the Ottoman Empire, a very big role, actually, a very, very important role. So the Albanians in the 60s, left Albania, many of them, and settled 
in Melbourne in Australia and that's when they 1963 built the first mosque in Melbourne nowadays Melbourne has many I don't know the exact number but Melbourne has a very big number of uh, mosques and Islamic community and Islamic centers community centers in Melbourne so after World War II as we had said already also next to the idea of having just the white European immigrants and accepting mainly Albanians Bosnians and Turks in 1967 to 1971 there is a big settlement at once basically within these four years approximately 10,000 Turks settled in Australia under an agreement between Australia and Turkey <coughs> it is interesting to see it is interesting to see here that Australia has signed an agreement with Turkey the same way that Germany had signed an agreement during the same time in the 60s with Turkey about when they implemented the guest worker scheme which meant that Turks from Turkey went to Germany and worked in the factories of Germany when Germany was still was developing and still the industry was still at the beginning and they needed factory workers now Australia copied Germany in that way and signed an agreement with Turkey as well and accepted 10,000 Turks this was the first Muslim community of Middle Eastern origin to settle in Australia so before that there were Bosnians and Albanians the majority of Muslim immigrants coming from Europe but now the first time although Turkey is in between it is uh, being a Middle Eastern and European country Turkey has five percent of its uh, of its territory uh, in Europe so uh, sometimes it's considered Europe sometimes considered a Middle East um, uh, but in that case the sources refer to the first time having other people than just the Europeans that we know from the Balkan coming over almost all of these people went to the two big cities Melbourne and Sydney and that's why we will find big Turkish communities in Melbourne and in Sydney the idea of Australia white only policy changed drastically in the 70s and onwards there was a shift in the government's attitude towards immigration the government became more accommodating and more tolerant of differences by adopting a policy of multiculturalism and that was in the 70s onwards from that time on Muslims from Asia as well as from Africa as well as from other parts of the world had the chance to go to Australia and settle so more than 60 countries more than 60 Muslim countries um, allowed Muslims or gave Muslims to Australia from that time on and they came from more than 60 countries with the largest number being from of course Bosnia Turkey Lebanon Syria but nowadays there are Muslims from Indonesia Malaysia Iran the Fiji Islands Albania Sudan Egypt the Palestinian territories Iraq Afghanistan Pakistan Bangladesh and many more so again we see how diverse the Muslim population in Australia is and as we have seen in the United States simply because it's a country of immigrants and if it had opened earlier Australia like the United States most probably we would have faced the same issues that we have in the United States with such a diverse Muslim population um, in both countries the Lebanese and Syrians like we said before and like we've discovered before in uh, the other countries the Lebanese and the Syrians were mainly Christians so the Arab element that came over was mainly Christ a Christian element and not necessarily a Muslim element there is an important period that has to be mentioned here with regards to the Lebanese nowadays in Australia uh, there is such a big number of Lebanese and there has developed quite a hostility towards Lebanese especially specifically um, there is a um, xenophobic element within Australian society also towards Asians and Asian immigrants but but uh, 
uh, it seems to be more uh, evident within the Arabs and within the Lebanese especially. And there, w there is no specific uh, reason for them uh, being Muslims or not being Muslims because, as we said, most of them are not even Muslims. And in 2005, there was a specific uh, incident that happened, the so-called the so Cronulla Rites, where Lebanese Australian Muslims and Anglo-Celtic Australian non-Muslims were fighting against each other. Now, in that case, they make a point of saying that basically it was Lebanese Australian Muslims. As far as I know, there were also Christians involved. It was more an ethnic tension than a religious um, um, problem. It was more an ethnic problem. But because 2005, that was four years after September 11, of course, this has affected also the way that people look at Arabs, the way that people look at Muslims, and also in Australia, not only in Europe, not only in America. This is something that, sadly enough, we all have to deal with, wherever you live. If you live now in America, if you live in Europe, if you live in Australia, after September 11th, things changed drastically. The, the way that people look, the average uh, European Muslim, uh, Average European, average uh, American, uh, Australian, the way they look at Muslims um, has changed drastically. Whereas before, a Muslim would not even be considered. You know, it doesn't really matter if you're Muslim. It didn't matter if you were Muslim or Christian or whatever. Now it is important. If you are a Muslim, people look at you in a different way after September 11th and, of course, after all the other incidents that we know in London, in Spain, and in other parts of the world. An important um, issue here in Australia, of course, is the issue of the Aborigines. <clears throat> As was mentioned before in the other period, in the other episode that we discussed, the Aborigine community were the ones actually who accepted Islam easily. Even nowadays you will find quite some Aborigines who are still interested in Islam and even finding the Islamic roots, because as I said before, in one of the episodes that we discussed Australia and the historical spread of, of Islam in Australia, we saw that when Islam spread in Australia, it affected, of course, the Aborigines there. They were the ones who were living there. And they easily accepted Islam, but after the British settled in Australia, they decided to break families apart, take children away, and put them into missionary schools in order to make them so-called good Christians. So the Aborigine, pop, Aboriginal population plays an important role with the spread of Islam, and they, being the real Australians, the native Australians, um, will play a future role, of course, for Islam being an integrative part in Australian society. Next to the Aborigines playing such a role, of course, because they have to affect their own society and their own um, country in that case, the Aborigines are the ones that suffer most of poverty, alcoholism, uh, problems, social issues and, and, and social problems within their community. So Islam is a way out of that. Christianity cannot offer that to them, did not offer it to them and cannot offer it to them. And many Aborigines have seen that, have realized that. And this, mashallah, again as Muslim, makes us very, very proud. You see that Islam has solution to problems. Islam has solutions to problems, and you will not find it with other religions in such a way. In the contrary, when the British actually went to Australia and they settled in Australia, they persecuted Australia, the, the, the Aborigines, they actually discriminated against them and pushed them in a corner, in the corner that they are now, becoming alcoholics, becoming having social problems and unemployment rate is extremely high under the Aborigines, so all this plays an important role. If we look at the states which have most of the Muslims in the country, New South Wales has more than 50% of the total number of Muslims, whereas Victoria, the state of Victoria, has 33% of the Muslims, followed by Western Australia, with only 7% of the Muslims. Everything else is a, very, a much smaller number. Queensland has just 5%, South Australia just 3%, and so on and so on. All the other territories, a percent or less. So we see that 
the Muslims are concentrated in specific territories, specific states, and specific cities. Melbourne a city and Sydney being the biggest ones, and then of course also Perth. The majority of people who reported Islam as their religion in the 2006 census were born overseas. This made it 58% of the people were born overseas. More than half of them were born overseas, nearly 200,000 people. So the rest were born in Australia. Of all persons affiliating with Islam in 2006, almost 9% were born in Lebanon and 7% were born in Turkey. Although it is an older immigrant group, like we're talking about the 50s, 60s, still, still we will find immigration from Turkey and from Lebanon and still we can see people, Muslims, coming originally from the territory and trying to establish themselves, settle in Australia. The industry of halal meat is massive in Australia. And this is something that I would like to mention. The Muslims did not just bring with them their culture and their deen itself, but they also brought the industry of halal meat. And halal meat is an important factor in the economy of Australia. A very important factor because they do not only um, produce halal meat for the Muslims within the country, but also export halal meat which of course plays an important role for the export industry in Australia and is a very, very important, plays an important role. And recently, not many years ago, they had the first halal meat exhibition in Australia and it has been going very well. And actually for years now, for years now, this has been going on quite well in Australia and was well received by all Australians. Next to this one, we have a lot of international students who study in Australia, a number from Muslim countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia, India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan, most of them. Um, and um, it's, 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 at this moment, I don't have specific numbers about how many students there are, but there are quite a number which has to be considered as in the States. As in the U.S., we have quite a number that has to be considered as well. One last important fact that has to be mentioned is the issue of the Bali bombings. As we are all aware, after the Bali bombings, of course, this affected, as the World Trade Center affected America and Europe, the Bali bombings affected the look at Islam and the Muslims in Australia. Of course, September 11 affected also the way that Australians looked at Muslims, but after the Bali bombings, it was more something that happened closer to home. So it's something that affected Australians, plus they killed 88 Australians were killed during the bombings. So this, of course, has affected the way that the Australians would look from that time on to Islam and to the Muslims in their country. Well. I would like to thank you actually for this exciting episode, I think, and would like to move on, inshallah. The next episode will still stay in Oceania, we'll still look into Australia, but I would like to take you further to New Zealand. New Zealand is, of course, much smaller than Australia, but still heavily influenced by immigrants and Im influenced by Muslims. So inshallah, I hope to see you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa we are the Muslim Ummah And each day that goes by The harder we try In gratitude we pray to Allah Chosen as part of the best of mankind We spread the word of Islam Every difficulty faced in our lives Makes us realize that it's just Part of Allah's plan, feeling stronger, we take it in our stride. We are the Muslim Ummah, and each day that goes by, the harder we try, in gratitude we pray to Allah. Chosen as part of the best of mankind, we spread the word of Islam. Every difficulty faced in our life